Beyond the Wrench with Jay Ganinen from Wrenchway. Welcome back to Beyond the Wrench. My name is Jay Ganinen and I am your host. For this week's episode, we have a really fun one in store for you. We had Jeff Buckley, who is the owner of My Father's Shop Certified Auto Repair on the podcast. And we talked about a variety of different things from social media and how it's impacted his, not only his business, but the industry uh, and how it impacts schools, right? And so uh, his involvement with schools, really what he's done to help build better programs, and he's done a lot of great stuff. But before we get to that podcast, I do want to uh, talk about the winner of our higher or lower game for our Wrenchway Insiders last week, and that was Michael Marquis with a high score of 33. With that, Michael won a $100 Amazon gift card, and this week it was sponsored by Bus Patrol. Bus Patrol's mission is to transform pupil transportation by creating a system to sustain the safety of children as they travel to and from school. Their AI-enabled Stop Arm Camera School Bus Safety Program allows our community partners to make the roads safer at no cost. So please go out, support Bus Patrol. It's a, a, new, uh, a new sponsor of the weekly prize, and uh, we're really, really grateful for that. Unfortunately, Michael did not turn over the Queen of Hearts, so that pot rises yet again to $2,700, some big time money now. And uh, if you want a shot to win that Queen of Hearts pot, head out to the Wrenchway app and play the higher or lower game. Whoever wins that weekly game gets a crack at the Queen of Hearts pot. And if you flip over the Queen of Hearts, you get to take home the cash. So really, really cool program and uh, hoping that we can give that big prize money away to a deserving technician. And uh, lastly, uh, before we get started with the podcast, I did want to mention our Wrenchway Schools Week that's upcoming uh, to recognize the hard work and important role educators play in helping solve the technician shortage. Wrenchway is excited to announce the first annual Wrenchway Schools Week. The purpose of Wrenchway Schools Week is to highlight and celebrate all the great things schools are doing to help students find success in technician careers and beyond. We will be hosting an instructor roundtable, a student roundtable, and giving a live demo of our new top schools pages, which are free pages to help schools attract more students to technician programs. Wrenchway Schools Week will take place from February 20, 22nd to the 25th. And if you wanna learn more about it, visit wrenchway.com slash events to see a full list of events and sign up to attend for free. Really, really excited about uh, our schools week and, and really the, uh, the round tables that we'll have there. Uh, a lot of really important things to discuss, right? The education and really the, the educators are the foundation of this entire industry when you really look at it. So uh, I think uh, this is a great week to bring everybody together. But uh, without further ado, here's our podcast with Jeff. On this week's episode of Beyond the Wrench, I'm lucky enough to be joined by social media superstar, Jeff Buckley. How are you, Jeff? Hey, howdy there. Uh, I sure do appreciate you having me on it. I don't know if I would have gone with that introduction. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm, you, I'm Jeff Buckley. <laughs> you do a good job with it. You do a really, really good job with it. And we're, we're going to dive into how you do it and really what your strategy is around it. But first, let's give the folks a background on you uh, about who you are, uh, what you do, and, and maybe how you got to this point in life. Well, I'm Jeff Buckley, owner and master technician at my father's shop, Certified Auto Repair. We're just a uh, small mom and pop shop here in Midlothian, Texas. And uh, I uh, started doing uh, some social media stuff. I did a commercial with uh, Mike Rowe and that kind of gave uh, credence, credibility to what I've been saying all along. And uh, so I just started reaching out and, and uh, you know, shop owners, we spend a lot of money on uh, tools and equipment and we need the stuff that really works. And that's when I started first reaching out to some of these companies and saying, hey, if, does your tool or, or equipment really do that? You know, send me one and, and let's try it in the shop in real world. Uh, you know, 
and working in a, in a garage and and uh, if it works you know we'll do some videos and we started reaching out and doing that and then um there's a story about i went to a, a training class and um they were uh, giving away you know some prizes and stuff which was some tools and equipment and you had to pre-register and you had to you know do a certain thing and we did that and uh, gates had a, a power flush tool that um that I already had <laughs> and I was the only one in there that was going to win it and there was a school that had come up uh, the instructor from down in uh, McAllen Texas and uh, I, I reached out to Gates and I said hey that, that guy could really use this tool and you know I could use a couple of displays can we can we just give it to him and this was an $800 tool and what struck me is everyone in that room was just astounded that a shop owner would give something away versus take it and sell it or put it on a tool truck or whatever and it's like okay you know it, it had more value to them than it did to me and yeah. so when i saw that it was like oh my gosh uh, i can use my platform with a lot of these companies and try to give you know tools to the schools that need them because if they're not being trained on the current uh technology then when we get them in the shop it's almost like we have to start all over so if they can get some of these uh the, the new technology in the schools, then that will actually help them help us. And so that's kind of how it all got started. And then several companies, uh, you know, we, we, we got some, some projects going, but that's kind of how it started as far as on the social media. Yeah. And how, I, I mean, you got it started. And I think one of the, one of the great things that you're, you're really good at being consistent, right? You're putting content out all the time. And, you know, I saw you down at SEMA, you were busy, you were talking on the microphone when I saw you down there, but uh, at Apex, you were uh, in doing interviews and um, and really just having fun with it, right? You, you do a really good job at just showing off your personality and you're a really likable guy, which I think helps a lot. Uh, so I, I, was that something you were comfortable with prior to getting on camera or was it something that you had a history of how how did uh, how did you get yourself comfortable with being in front of a camera well that was that was just kind of um it it just worked out i've i've uh always been kind of more of a uh, quiet reserved person but it's like at some point in time you need to uh step up you need to uh speak out and so I, I use a phrase called uh, lead, follow, or get out of the way. And so I would sit back and I would see all these ones and it's like, oh my gosh, you have that platform, you know, get, can't you use it? Hey, can't we, we, we better the industry? And it was like, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I point at myself and say, can't you do that? And it was like, okay, so, so let's, uh, you know, let's reach out and, and use, uh, you know, my platform and, and all my years of experience and being a master tech and, and being a shop owner that actually works in the shop. Like I said, we're a small shop and so I do all the work. And so that actually makes a difference to a lot of these companies as far as when I talk about credibility, yes. because I'm actually doing this stuff. I'm actually turning the wrenches. I'm actually using the tools and equipment. And so I said, okay, hey, so when I would reach out to them, it's like, okay, hey, I did this, this commercial with Micro and I've watched all of what Federal uh, Mogul did and how they marketed and and I didn't know all that before and so I just sat back and watched and listened and and uh, that's what you have to do sometimes is is look and see how it works because a lot of times like right now on social media people are so afraid to hop in so afraid to do it because they don't understand it or they don't uh, know how it works and it's just a real simple deal but you do have to work it on on a constant basis. And so when you talk about um, that, you saw me at Apex, uh, we did, we were going out there and doing some videos with at SEMA and Apex and, and just on our own. And uh, Apex saw all my stuff on social media and their marketing team. And they said, hey, will you come out here and, and uh, we'll have a camera crew follow you around. And that was two years ago. And we did that and they loved it. And, and I asked them, uh, the marketing girls, I said, okay, <laughs> Let me ask you a question. How is it that you see all my stuff? Why are you choosing me? And it's like, well, because your stuff is all out there. Well, that's part of 
you're, you, when you, you do a video or you post something, it just doesn't go out there on its own. You have to, number one, produce good content, but yes. then you also have to um, tag the companies that you're using so that they see it. You have to tag the consumer or, or whatever your market is. You have to tag that so that, in, and when I say tag it, you either have to put words in your description or on Instagram or whatever. You can actually put hashtags and a tag so that when people type that word in, then your video or your content will pop up so they can see it. So there's a little bit of a learning curve. And like I said, I just sat back and watched what the other companies were doing. And then I guess I was really blessed by uh, Gates because I was doing some videos and uh, Gates would share it. Well, Gates is international. Wherever there was a factory, their factory uh, uh, foreman or factory, uh, uh, you know, the guy in charge of the factory would, would see it and then they would reshare it. So down in Australia, over in Germany, in Saudi Arabia, everywhere they had a factory. And all of a crazy? sudden, my stuff was getting blown up uh, worldwide. And then the other thing is you have to think about time zones. Just like when we're scheduling this meeting, we had a meeting yesterday and the guy was saying a certain time, uh, Eastern time, and uh, we're on Central time. And the one that was scheduling the meeting didn't realize the time zone <laughs> difference. And so they were calling at 1030 and, and our meeting was at 1130. And, and so if you post late at night, that video pops up where it's daytime, you know, like Australia, Hawaii, different places yeah. like that. If you punch in the morning, well, those places are still asleep. So you have to look at that and say, well, what's your market? Are you trying to reach everybody? Are you trying to reach the West Coast, the East Coast? You're just trying to reach right here in your town. And so that's kind of how it developed. Last year, we had, a, 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 in 2020, we had a, a, a good deal at Apex and, and Apex got canceled. So then this past year, 2021, they had us back out there and, and it was down in Joe's garage and yeah. that's a unique area. And so when I see something like that, that's a unique area. That's really an area that benefits for folks to come see, put their hands on, get demonstrations, then it's like, oh my gosh, I sure would like to be involved with it. Because a lot of times you, you'll have a sales guy that's just going to try to sell you something, or you'll have a technical guy that knows all the, the technical stuff, but he doesn't know how to talk to you. They start using all these fancy words. And my deal is, you know, when I, when I talk and do my videos for the consumer, they don't want to hear fancy words. They want to hear how it's going to benefit them, how it's going to help them, or why it costs so much to do the repair, because they don't understand all the tools and equipment that we have to have, all the different deals that have to be taken apart to do a repair. Yeah. And now you're getting into ADAS and all of that. And so it's like, okay, I can take my knowledge and use that and help these guys that are at the shows uh, describe you know, I, I kind of pull it out of them what the, the shop owners and the technicians need to hear versus just sitting there and go, oh my gosh, hey, we got this thing and this is going to change your life. And you're like, no, 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 no. Let's, okay, will it do this? You know, and because I actually use it in the shop, then, then we know, yeah, it's going to work or no, it's not going to work. So let's, let me start with something that I think a lot of shop owners struggle with and managers in general which is to find time to do stuff like this, right? And you know, you're you're running a an operation where you're working on cars. How are you finding the time and prioritizing this to the point to where you are putting content out consistently? Well, it, it basically it's how can you not find time to do this, okay? You know, because you have to come back and you have to say ROI. Everything that the that the shop does, everything that the shop owner does, in any type of promotion, any type of marketing, you know, needs to have an ROI and you need to know that. And I've seen so many folks out there and locally too, is they'll put an ad in, in this magazine that comes out once a month, you know, the local community one. And it's like, okay, how many people see that? How many people come in and say, hey, I came over here because I saw that 
and you're paying a thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars a month to get one of those ads. And it's like I can't see waste, and I say wasting putting out that type of money and not yeah. knowing that you're getting a return on it, not knowing who's seeing it, not knowing that you're benefiting from having that ad out there. And so uh, when we started doing it, it was like, okay, I'm going to look for stuff that you, that is free or low cost. And um, ASA actually did an article uh, in, in the last quarter um, about guerrilla marketing and, and yeah. people are calling me, you know, I'm a guerrilla marketer, uh, as social media, whatever, you know, and, and, and I was showing some of my ideas and stuff. And so it's like on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, that stuff doesn't cost. So when you say, how do you have your time? It comes back to how we do business here. We, um, pretty much schedule most of our work by appointments, but if, we're not sure why the vehicle's coming in, the check engine lights on, it's got a noise or whatever. We'll ask them to stop by. I'll stop, I'll walk out there and I'll look. We'll, we'll uh, do a quick diagnostic. You know, I might, you know, stick a jack up underneath it, raise it up, see if we got a bad hub, a bad berry, check brakes and stuff. So when that vehicle comes in, we pretty much know why it's coming in and what we're gonna need. So we order that stuff so it's already here. Now you're getting into time management. How do you run your shop better? So it's like scheduling appointments, but also scheduling the stuff that's coming in. Because right now, if you go on, all these guys are going, oh my gosh, I've got cars here for two or three days. I'm waiting on parts. Oh my gosh, I can't get parts. Okay, well, if you know that in advance, then you can reach out to the dealer and say, hey, you got one of these in stock. Hey, you know, save it for me, send it to me, whatever. You know, put it down to deliver uh, next Monday. You can do all that in advance. And so my wife just does, Candace is, is the unsung hero bes behind my father's shop and behind me. A lot of people don't know. She's the one that makes it where that I can do all of this because like we have an oil change coming in. She's got the printed out the ticket and has the filter sitting there. Make sure we have the right kind of oil because wow. there's all kinds of oil now. And you don't want to, you know, have one come in and, oh, we, we got to wait. We, we ran out of this oil or we didn't have enough and, and uh, big places they stock it you know in the in the in the drums and in the reels and small shops don't do that so we always make sure it's here now of course when it comes in hey they need an air filter hey they need a cabin air filter and you have to have a good relationship with your parts house to, to be able to run that over but it all comes back to uh, you know allocating your time it's like, okay, if we, if we do this right, well, now you have to look at it in our marketing. It's like when you, you asked me once before, how do I do uh, my content? Is it fly by, fly by the seat of my pants or do we schedule that? <laughs> and it's like, okay, I'll be working on one. And we have the studio and you can see it behind me set up here yeah, in the, it's very in the nice. corner of the shop. Well, we have the lights and the cameras and the mics and I can roll these out or move them or my biggest one is my iPhone and everybody says, you don't do, you, yeah, that's what I use for most of mine. And I have a mic set up and I'll just reach over there and hook the, I have a new one that hooks in here and, and. Uh, like a wireless. lapel mic that, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's a new kind that the uh, power deal goes here on your phone and it, it unbelievable sound because like at um, Apex, we were walking around with just a, a boom mic and it was picking up the air conditioners up on the roof. And <laughs> Everything. It was, it was picking up the sand from the booth mix. And I was like, oh, my gosh, we got to correct that. And so these mics are under 200 bucks and, you know, for two of them. And, and they're rechargeable. And, and we just used them at, it, at Colorado Summit. But it's just something quick and easy. It's not because I was using the kind that you stick down in your pocket and run <laughs> the wire up. And that takes time. So it's like, okay, if we're going to do this just real quick. I have a vehicle come in and it has an issue and I'm like, oh my gosh, this would be good content. This would be something good. So I keep a stand uh, right by my toolbox. I'll just pull that over and I'll slip my mic on. A lot of times I'll start it or I actually have it hooked to my watch and, oh, wow. uh, and I can start it. Or I holler at my wife, hey, come here real quick. <laughs> and sometimes she'll start it and walk away. And uh, sometimes she'll uh, stand there and do it because, you know, we need to zoom in or we need to, okay, I'm going to say this and then move over here and show this part. 
and she'll do that, move around, and and then uh, then she'll holler at me. You know, you got to get this done today. Or you've got three more. You got three more waiting, and it's like, okay, this takes five or ten minutes. So we do it. Sometimes I'll go live. Other times I'll just record them, and then in the evening I'll sit in there and edit videos. You know, and I might I might do ones that I've that I've done the past week, and yeah. I'll go through and I'll edit them and and just put little clips and. And a lot of times it's now people want to see what's called shorts. They want to see just the tidbit of it. They just want to see the meat or they just want to see the, the funny part. And, uh, you know, you kind of learn this on going along. But for the, for the shop owner to start out and say, how can I help? It's like, okay, you just grab that and go out into the shop. And, and number one, introduce yourself. Number two is show your staff because People like to do business with people they know. Yes. Well, if they walk in and they've seen your video on on uh, Facebook, on YouTube, on wherever, then they already know you. If they see your service advisor, hey, this is Jill. Hey, this is John. Then when they come in, hey, John, hey, Jill, they act like they already know them because people like to do business with people they know. Yeah. And then they see the ones that are working on and on the shop. And, uh, you know, a lot of times they go all over and it's like they don't know who's working on their car. They don't know the credentials. And you may have all their ASE credentials hanging on the wall, but they don't know which one is back there working on their car. And it just is comes back to the hometown feeling of doing business with somebody you know. Well, that's, that's something that we we promote to a lot of our clients too, right? Is that doing video, you know, so many people need technicians and doing video helps a technician understand who they're going to go sign up to work for. Like it helps them understand if they like that person and if that person, and not only that, that maybe the service manager, but the people that they'd be working alongside. And if you give them some familiarity up front, video is just such a powerful tool in that regard to, to really show, show off your staff. And when you're talking about the clients and the customers, uh, your customers, it helps build that trust too, doesn't it? Because they, 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 they feel like they know you. And that was, that was an issue the industry had for a long time was that trust issue. And here you are just building trust with your clients. You're showing them truly, you know, this is what this looks like when it's wrong and it's bad. I, I love the visuals that you come with because that just helps build that trust and really helps show that you're an expert at what you do. Well, then see right there, you touched on the word expert. That's what the shop owners need to understand is they need to be the expert in the area. You know, when, when you talk about Wrenchway, y'all help recruit uh, technicians. You know, you're helping try to bring, and we'll talk about bringing them from the schools into the yeah. shops but you're trying to bring them in. So like you said, if you're doing a video and you're showing your shop that you have the latest, greatest equipment, the guy's like, oh, wow. You know, I want to work there. If they see your shop is clean, it doesn't have, you know, we've been here in this location 28 years and you don't see 28 years worth of grace on my floors. The customers will come in and go, oh my gosh, because we don't want to, track that oil and stuff into their nice cars. You know, you're right. talking 40, 50, $80,000 cars. And, you know, yeah, we slipped the, the paper in there and, and hey, we worked on your car and we protected it. But it's like, if you don't, if you don't have that grease laying around, <laughs> it's, it, makes them, it makes them more comfortable with you working on their vehicle. That's the same way with the technicians coming in. Like you said, they can see, oh my gosh, that guy, you know, the, the way that he talks with his customers, oh my gosh, the way that their shop is, oh my gosh, the way they do business. I would like to be associated with that. So yes, that's going to help you bring in where they're saying, oh, we have a technician shortage because the guy is sitting at home and he's going, that dumb boss yelled at me again for, you know, not taking out the trash. And it was like, you know, <laughs> something. And they see your video and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, these, these, if, if we, you know, we can relate it back to you watch the, uh, all the TV shows with the, with the guys that are customizing and, and you got one guy that's just hollering and yelling and throwing and, and, and you're like, okay, that's a drama. That's good for TV. But what I want to work there, I once uh, talked with Chip Foose and I said, Mr. Foose, I really want to tell you, I appreciate you because 
you actually get out there and work. You put your hands on it. And I've never seen you holler at anybody. And he told me, he says, well, you know, like my daddy told me one time you get more, uh, more, you know, lies with honey than you do with vinegar. And it's like, and, and, and he means that in, in, uh, that's his philosophy. And you can see the, the quality of work that, that he puts oh, out yeah. and he comes back to the same thing. You know, if you treat them right, if you bring them in, you know, when you talk about, um, the the consumer and us yes there's always been a um, a difference of opinion <laughs> and it's like okay well then let's raise that up and that's what i'm trying to show you always see me in my nice uniform sponsored yes. by uh, red cap and it's like look professional they when yeah. they come in look professional number two have your shop clean you know number three treat them there is plenty of work out there for everybody we're not competing with each other. We have different types of uh, base of, of clientele and there is plenty of work. We don't need to add anything. We don't need to act like we're selling them. All of a sudden you build the trust. You be the expert in your area. And a lot of guys across the, the, the nation here uh, on any certain week, there might be 30 or 40 shop owners that will share my videos. And it comes back to, because I'm not saying, hey, come to my shop. I'm saying, go to a certified shop that uses certified technicians. So I tell these shop owners, you don't do videos, grab some of mine and, and share them and put at the top, hey, we can do this. Hey, this is our buddy Jeff showing you some of the stuff that we that we do at our shop, you know? That is and cool. then transition to doing those. Anybody can choose my content. Because that's why I'm putting it out there. You know, I'm not saying, okay, you want to use that, send me a royalty. It's like, you want to use my content. If it can help the industry, use it, share it, show your customers, you can do this. This is what you do. This is why you do that stuff. Then they understand, you know, because a lot of times the guys are like, oh, I can't, I can't afford to pay my technicians. I can't afford to, to stop and do videos. You can't afford not to. You can't yes. afford not to invest in the tools and equipment. You can't afford not to help the income and tax that we're trying to get from these schools. So how do we get them? Well, we have to go back and help the schools. That's part of what my platform is in, in, in a lot of what I do. Um, we just put out a video with um, ASA Colorado Summit, which was at Lincoln Tech. And we had the excellent opportunity to talk with the campus president, Kelly Moore, just the nicest young lady. And then she started, and, and I haven't always had the best uh, thoughts on some of these uh, schools. Yeah. And it's like, oh my gosh, I was standing there looking at a uh, uh, Hawkeye Elite um, alignment machine. Nice machine. And if you saw me at Apex, we did a video with Hunter and their Hunter Elite. And it was like, they got, that was, that's the latest right there. And we saw the dyno, we saw, you know, all of them had lifts. They had all these uh, tool carts, tool chests, you know, with, with the tools, each of them had the same tools for each, you know, student and each, depending on what class they were in, it, they had the tools in there. And, and it was like, oh my gosh. I was impressed. And then she was telling me about, you know, how she partners with ASE to, to let the students take the test, to let the community, you know, because you have to go to a, a proctored spot to take ASE tests and how they uh, uh, partnership with them, they partnership with ASA. And I was just sitting there going, oh my gosh, <laughs> this, this is, is amazing. Great. Yes. Yes. And it, you know, and so, like I said, we had the opportunity to talk with her and so that's something that a lot of people don't don't get to. So when I talk to them, I try to ask the same questions that a shop owner would ask, you know, about their program about, okay, how do I get some of these students? Well, guess what? If you go and partner with them and say, hey, how can I help you? Can I come in when you're teaching a class on breaks and I can answer any questions from a technician's point, from someone that's actually working on it? because you've got a, a, a teacher and instructor up there doing it. And, you know, the students may say, yeah, when's the last time you, you actually had, had uh, you know, a vehicle and, and, you, and you put your hands on it? Well, you know, they go out in their shop and do it. But a lot right. of times it's the lab vehicles. And a lot of these cars have older lab vehicles. You know, lab vehicles, a vehicle that got donated. That's one of the deals that we've been working on. Last year, we had uh, 12 
vehicles from our customers that got donated to uh, the schools. And this year we've already had, uh, we just donated five to um, a school in Mesquite. That's, that's that a new cool. school. And, and they had one lab vehicle. So lab vehicles, if they don't have the proper vehicles to work on, if they got old ones, that's not what we're working on in the shops. Right. That's what the shop owner can, can reach out and help and get involved. And then all of a sudden, folks like uh, Kelly will start saying, oh, well, you know, come, come take your pick. We're fixing to place some of these students. That's how you start getting in to get these in. But you also have to remember, they can only teach them what they have there at the yeah. school. They teach them the basic. You have to teach them what you work on in the shop. And so uh, John Gardner told me one time, I asked him, I said, John, what would you tell uh, the shop owners, if you had a bunch of them standing right here about your students. And he said, I tell them to be patient with them for six months to a year. Yes. And then I tell my students, guys, this is just like you're, uh, you're, you're learning, but guess what? They're paying you while you learn. So don't think you're going to make $50,000 when you're learning and they're going to teach you what they're working on. They're going to teach you the way that they want you to do it. It's more than I can teach you. We can teach you the basics and we can teach you what we have. But if you have a shop that just specializes in European, if you have one that just specializes in, in Asian, or you might be a shop like mine that works on everything, these students might not have been exposed to that. And so that's the biggest thing that the shop owners need to realize and have patience, not have a revolving door, have yeah. patience. Yes. If they make a mistake, that's the cost of doing business. You just have well, someone mentoring with them so that if they make a mistake, you catch it before the customer does. Yeah, and you hit on a bunch of really good points there. The one that I kind of want to pull out of there to talk about is one that you mentioned about being present and helping them, you know, whether it's get a donation, when you help the school get a donation, help them uh, by coming to talk to their school. You know, being present is such a big deal and not a lot of shops do it. And I think that is really damning to all of these local programs who, like it or not, they need the help. They, they need the help of industry to build better programs. And I think we're starting to connect some of the dots, but I absolutely love that you pointed that out because one of, one of the biggest issues I hear from tech instructors is that they get really annoyed when a shop shows up at graduation time asking for a technician when they haven't been involved in the program the entire time prior to that, right? That is, that is correct. And then it's like, you're like a shark out there circling the cage, you know, somebody, <laughs> some, somebody, something splashed in the water and you're jumping out there. You need to be over there at the beginning because so many of these schools, and when I say schools, I'm talking the high schools, do not have much of a budget. Now there's some schools like uh, Jack Stone in North Kansas City, and that guy, you know, great program, uh, different uh, high schools feed into to his campus and he's got a, a, a working budget. There's a school in uh, Rolling Meadows, um, Illinois, that has like a thousand dollars budget. And he said, Jeff, I can spend my thousand dollars on buying blue rags for the kids to wipe off their hands. And then I don't have any money to buy um, tools, anything. equipment, you know, anything else. There was the school here in uh, the local school. They were putting engines together, dry fitting them. They could not start them. They could not put any liquids in them because they didn't have the funds to buy the gaskets to be able to, you know, properly torque the heads and everything down and, and put the oil pans on and actually put coolant in them, put oil in them. They didn't have the budget to get the gaskets. I deal with a company that, that you know, can get gaskets. And, right. uh, and, and I called them, uh, they wanted me to, to do a, a little forum deal. And I said, okay, I need you to, I'll do it, but I need you to give some gaskets to this school up here. And the guy was like, oh my gosh, that one's, that one's a local school. And it's like, <laughs> okay, what? You, they're local right there by you and you've never reached out. Hey, how can we help you? Can we put some signs up? You know, and the thing is, is so many people don't realize you'll go through a few that is like, yeah, you know, yeah, you want to come over? Yeah, yeah. And then most of them are so appreciative. They just, you know, almost fall over themselves trying to thank you 
for just little simple things. And it's like, you know, so when we talk about the blue rags, if you want to go over there and meet them, grab a case of blue rags, you know, cost you 50 bucks, 45 bucks and take yeah. it with you and say, Hey guys, I brought some blue rags. I, I didn't know if it was something you could use. I want to introduce myself. Hey, you know, how can I help? A lot that of is such a good idea. A, a that is such these, a good idea. <laughs> just a simple thing. Yeah. You know, uh, take some, uh, take some, uh, uh, a uh, fast orange, some of the uh, stuff to wash, wash your hands off with. Take a couple of jugs of that over there because that's something they don't have to buy right out of their budget. And a lot of times we, you know, we can buy stuff on Tuesday and get a and and uh, get a uh, a discount. You know, they'll credit us for whatever you buy on Tuesday. We'll give you back eight eight percent, ten percent. You know, or or you get the two or three percent back off of your purchases. You know, and it's like, okay, well, what do we do? You know, you can sell your scrap iron and uh, the guy gives you the money and just say, you know what, I, I can put that in a fund, you know, for the school. Hey, I can, if I do that um, four times a year, I, I might have enough to do a $500 scholarship. And what is it doing? It's, you're telling that school, you're telling that student, I appreciate you. Yes. You know, we want to help. We welcome you into the industry. It's just little things. I went around here uh, a couple of years ago when I was working with the, the, our local school district. And I went around to four shops and I said, hey guys, uh, would you give a $500 scholarship for the school? Oh my gosh, yeah. And yeah. I had four, four other shops that was gonna write a check and now reached out to the school. Did you guys ever get that scholarship? Well, no. And it's like, <laughs> You know, you're like, okay, I, I can't put it in my pocket, walk it up here and put it on your counter. I'm not going to handle somebody else's money. But, you know, you have to do a little bit yourself. And sometimes yeah. you'll run into that. Don't get discouraged. You know, okay, the local school done one up. Then look over in the next county. There's a school over there. I actually sponsor right now, I think we're sponsoring seven schools into ASA. And I, I have a school in Hawaii. I got a school in Florida. I got a school in Illinois. I got a, uh, three schools here in Texas. And um, the school in Florida told me one time, and he went on a video and he said, you know, I get more help out of Jeff Buckley in Texas than I do from shops around me in Florida. And that's got to change. That's got to change, like, right? That's, yeah. That's the stuff where... You know, I feel like we can yell it from a mountaintop and we still don't get the traction with these shops. And that that's one of the frustrating parts is a lot of people like to complain that th this is an issue, right? We don't have the people. We don't have the people. Yet nobody's doing anything about it in, in terms of like what you're doing in terms of getting involved with your school. And something as simple as giving them shop rags could actually have an impact on that school, let alone the scholarships and and even you know, I talked to our local high school uh, here in Mount Horeb, Wisconsin, oh, probably six months ago. And they were the first to admit at, at the high school, they just didn't have the technical knowledge. So they need to be paired up with somebody that does have technical knowledge, maybe do a train the trainer type of thing. Do, you know, that it, you could, as a technician, go into a school, teach the teachers how to do some specific thing, right? Maybe some type of uh, simple maintenance even, you know, they, they were working on, I, when I went up there, it was like a 67 Chevy pickup. And I'm like, that's not going to get the, that's not the, that's not going to get the students the whole picture of how to work on their own car or how to do, you know, their own repairs. So that, that to me is something that a, as an industry, we've got to change. We've got to get behind these schools. That, that comes back to lab vehicles. That's all they had was an old 67. We need to get them some newer ones. You know, and some of the companies, uh, I've seen some of the insurance companies have started reaching out to the collision shops and uh, the collision schools and giving them uh, vehicles. Uh, when I was at Lincoln Tech, uh, they had a, a kind of beat up newer model Nissan on the, on the rack there, you know, so that probably, you know, got donated or, or came from an insurance company or rent a car or whoever, but it gave, it don't matter what the outside looks like. You know, because our job is to fix those anyways. Right. But, you know, when you say shout it from the mountaintop, I think sometimes we don't do that. Uh, when I was at, at Colorado Summit, um, the first uh, on Friday, it was a meeting and it was basically shop owners in the in the class. And, and uh, you know, they had some speakers there. 
And um, at the end, one of them said something about me. And I said, let me ask you all a question. And there was 25 or 30 shop, Colorado shop owners in the room. And I said, raise your hand. How many have heard that ASA, your ASA uh, meeting right here, this is ASA convention. How many of y'all heard that for $50, you can sponsor a school into ASA, it's an educational money? None of them held their hands up. And they said, what? Tell us more. And I said, for 50 bucks, you sponsor me. And now when we talk about training the trainers, now they have a membership into ASA so that if the local chapter has a meeting, those guys are welcome oh, to wow. come to it. I so when you do that. the training, they're welcome to come to it. If you have a training class, say they're bringing in some trainer that charges uh, 125 bucks uh, a, a student. If you tell them, we're inviting this instructor from a school, is that okay? They won't charge. The trainer won't charge for that one so that they can come and attend. So now they're getting that education. They're getting the training where it's like, oh, hey, I don't have time, you know, to come over in, in the middle of the afternoon and, and teach this one class. But you're giving them access to that training. So now they can come to those meetings. They can come to the training classes. The other thing is it, is it gives them access to the library. So now they can go back and pull the webinars. They can pull any training classes that are on video. They have access to all of that. Wow. And it costs the shop 50 bucks. That's how much you spend going out to dinner with your wife. Yeah. You can do that one time and that takes care of them for the whole year. Now, if the shop, if, if that school sees the value and the guy says, hey, I'm going to pay the 50 bucks myself next year. Now you can go help another school. That's how I've expanded out with the schools that I help is you get one in, they see the value and they get a sticker on their, in their school and, you know, they can get the sign if they want. And, and all of a sudden wow. it's like, hey, we're, we're associated with ASA. And they see the value. Then they say, you know, I pay that out of my budget or whatever. Now you can take that same 50 bucks and help another school the next year. If we all start doing that, we'll grow all of this. Yes, and when we, will. we talk about what you're trying to do, you're trying to pair the schools. And the, so then it's like, okay, come on over. We'll get you all a, a, a membership in ASA. And uh, then you can start promoting that. You know, these guys, are, you're working on scholarships and stuff. Okay, well, let's get some scholarships into ASA. And, it, right. it, you know, it's not the same price that the shops pay. It's 50 bucks a year. It's an educational membership. Wow. I, I did not know that. That is, uh, that's so really we, cool. So we haven't been shouting it loud enough from the mountaintop. No, I, I, I'll, I'll for sure shout that out. Like, I, I think that's. That's so important to get that out there. And, and another thing that you had mentioned, and this is funny, uh, my business partner, Mark Wilson, had brought this up. He runs a nonprofit um, in honor of a, a friend of his, and they give away like five scholarships per year. When he joined forces with me, he made one of them a, a, a skilled trade scholarship, and they had nobody apply for it. Uh, at the high school level. So that's telling me we've got to do a better job of getting visibility in front of these these students to even know that that's a thing, right? And I've talked to other associations that also do scholarships, have struggled to find people to even take, you know, it's free money. Like they're, they're not going out and taking the free money. And maybe it's because they're not maybe a, a stellar student and don't feel like they'd ever qualify for uh, for a scholarship and they don't apply or, you know, I don't know why, why that is. Uh, we're actually, I run a car show uh, up in my hometown and we're, we're now doing a scholarship for uh, uh, somebody that's entering the skilled trades as well. And I'll be really fascinated to hear uh, what, what, if any, hopefully people apply to it, um, but uh, are doing like a thousand dollar scholarship for uh, somebody that's entering the skilled trades and I'm like man if I when back when I was a kid or when I was in high school that would have been great I would have loved that nobody ever did that well and, and part of the issue and and 
this is personal experience working with the local schools and sending my children we raised four children through the local school is a lot of times it comes back to the counselors sharing that information yes. so when, when you come back and say hey we're doing this it's kind of like um you're you're saying okay well y'all uh, wrenchway does a, a scholarship in honor of this guy and your um your car car uh, program does a scholarship well if you'll go to a certain school like you know if, if there's a, a lincoln tech up there if you go to the high school and you say at the beginning of the year go into the uh, office to the administrator to the principal to the to the lead uh, counselor and say here's a check for five hundred dollars we're given and in your friend's case it's in honor of so in other words this scholarship is called the j scholarship or this scholarship is called the uh, you know whatever your your friend's name was yeah. that's the name of the scholarship and it only goes to someone that's going into uh you know a technical school technical right. college whatever then they have that at the beginning of the year and then they start posting it and they start telling so then the shop class and you go to the shop class hey how many guys you graduated this year oh we're graduating uh, 12 okay how many of those are going to go into an, a, another you know to another school to the trade trade school to, to what school and he'll say well at, at least 10 of them are and you right. say, okay, tell, tell those 10 just submit the application there's 500 dollars sitting there waiting for somebody then they know about it then they apply for it at that school at your local school at your local you know in your local area uh, a lot of these are nationwide ones you know because uh, uh like branchway would be i anybody in the nation well then it comes back to getting the word out and then again oh well you know there's gonna be a thousand people applying for one scholarship you know i, I don't have no chance and you build it like that starting locally and then you say oh my gosh this is this is doing good let's expand it expand right. it to, to your county expand it you know and 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 it, again it depends on your network on how far can you go to your your state you know if you go nationwide that's like some of these big companies you know like like Pro, like zr who, you know like red line detection atex yep. some of the big companies but again then they have to do a promotion that lets people know about it because the local counselor is not going to tell that student hey i saw this walmart's giving away you know if you have a walmart in your in your district then they might know about it but otherwise they're not going to say hey jc pennies is giving out hey target's giving out money they're not going to tell them because the the thought process is the counselors say you're an adult <laughs> there's a pile of books over there go through and look through and see what you can pick out they right. don't come and give it to them and and that's what happens because when you talk about time we started out talking about how do i have time to do the videos how do i have time to go out into the industry and do stuff it just comes back to where's your heart what do you want to place the value on so if, if you're you really want to place value on that scholarship then you reach to them because so many of them are not going to reach to you you know it's like oh i don't have a chance right right and that's how i would have been as a student right uh, growing up i definitely not an a student by any stretch of the imagination and and uh I probably wouldn't have even applied for it just because i wouldn't have thought i would have got you know or had a chance at it um so that is that's a really good piece of advice now what do you see from from working with schools what do you think they need the most is it just supplies is it you know is it presence does it change from school to school what is it that you would say in your dealings with schools that they're desperate for the biggest deal is attention okay we did uh, uh, a, uh, a giveaway with with a tech a tech tpms tools yeah and they put out the in the, the press release uh, a tech uh, teams with uh, texas shop owner jeff buckle <laughs> and basically it was okay nominate your school to to win a tool and now this went nationwide and um so you had to somebody had to nominate the school 
Now, once the schools were nominated, the second part of it was go back in and vote. So the school with the most votes won the tool. Well, in order to get the most votes, the school had to, number one, is get the support of the school. So they got the school to realize, oh my gosh, we have an auto shop. <laughs> I didn't know that. What do those guys do? You know? <laughs> the teachers, the, the, the other students, you know, everybody knows we got a football team. They didn't know they had an auto shop program. So you build in the school right there. And then you start reaching out to the community. They ask their parents, hey, vote for us so we'll win this tool. Then the parents started saying, oh my gosh, you know, they started noticing a little bit of pride. They started noticing a little bit of boost in the morale. It was like, well, auto shop class is not for the ones that nobody else wants in their class. Right. <laughs> the guy that, that, that uh, got kicked out of the football team, the guy that, uh, you know, gets in trouble all the time. It's not for those. These are for legitimate students that are trying to learn a legitimate trade. You know, whether the, a lot of them, the parents can afford to send them to college and some of them can't, you know, right. there's a lot out there that it would be easier, you know, on, on the parents if, if they got help getting the kid, getting the student further educated, you know, and, and a lot of times it's like when you say trade school, it's like, okay, now we're back to that. So many people don't trust the mechanics. So many don't. So that's like, okay, we're, we're working on that in the industry, improving our image. Well, the same thing. If we bring those students in, then we have to improve. If we bring in these technicians in, we have to treat our technicians right. But so the community got involved and all of a sudden they started realizing, oh my gosh. So now we're bringing attention to them. Now the local shops go, oh my gosh, I didn't know. Joel did a, I thought Joel was the track coach. I didn't know he did an automotive uh, uh, class too. So we got attention to some of the uh, local shops. Then the local shops started getting involved and saying, oh my gosh, so we can go over there and, and pick a guy, you know, that can come work in the afternoon, you know, that, that we can get trained. So then summertime comes, he can come help us out summertime. And, and then we can let him see, is this, is this the right fit for him? Is this the right fit? Because there's all kinds of shops. You know, I told you, you got some that will specialize and some that are general. And, right. uh, you know, it, I, I saw an article the other day about uh, the ones coming in. And the first thing they get is chained to the, to the lube rack. <laughs> and it's like, okay, they, yeah, it's a way to bring them in. And yes, you need someone to do that. But they have to have a process where they can uh, be mentored and work up because they ain't gonna make a living at, at the lube brag and right. you just, you know, are you a revolving door? You're just cycling them through or you're trying to help our industry and, and, and raise your own. And so that's kind of the deal is, is that help. Uh, ATEC saw the value that was a huge value to them because then all of a sudden, you know, they, people started noticing their tool, which was a great tool. It's the fastest on the market. And so it's, it was like a win-win. They were all excited about it and they got to help schools. And the contest kind of evolved because then they were like, oh my gosh, we want to take the school that won. We want to go there, <laughs> hand it to them, teach a class. And they got some more PR out of it. But the, the, it, when you walk into these schools, they just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. If you look on my social media and on Instagram, um, DHS Tech, a, a school down in uh, DeCaney High School in uh, Spring, Texas, Red Cap uh, once a quarter supplies me with some shirts that we send to a school. We get their sizes and then it comes back to customizing. The first batch uh, we, we paid for and had customized here locally, uh, our logo on the back and the school on the front. You look in the pictures, they're students because it was juniors and seniors. So the seniors are gone. The juniors are now seniors. They're wearing those shirts. And they <laughs> went to the, to the uh, different um, uh, competitions and they could walk in wearing these shirts. They just got their chest puffed out a little bit more, their shoulders up a little bit more straight. You yeah. know, and they're walking, they're proud. They're looking good. And it was just a little simple thing of a shirt. And it's like, okay, what is it? You know, these nice shirts, they, they, they cost us 
30, 35 bucks. Yeah. And uh, little things, all of a sudden, now, you know, it's like, we're we're showing that we care about them and you know people want to want to do stuff for other people people want to help people and it's like if we just show them hey they can help these schools they can help these students a lot of the schools are you know on reduced lunch program that type of economy and little things like that all of a sudden it's like oh my gosh hey you talked to me hey you looked at me eye to eye hey you had a conversation hey you care about us right that's I, all part of and I that's think all in that's that's the biggest thing right you care about us you you are, are investing your time and i there's not many people doing it much better than you are out there right you're you're, you're really involved i i love i'm a huge fan of what you do uh i think it's it's impact right you're having an impact on these schools and whether that's connecting one industry person or partner with the school to help them um or doing it yourself there's just there's so much value in what you're doing and and uh speaking for the industry i think we all really really appreciate what you're doing out there and that's kind of brings me to my last point and that is i, I want to ask you why 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 are you so passionate about the industry why are you so why, why do you go out of your way to do stuff over and above what impacts your shop well, don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many that helped my children when we were growing up. My children got all kinds of scholarships locally. This is something I can do. So many people don't realize the little things they can do that mean so much to others that's a blessing and by doing that you get overflowed with blessings yourself why am i visible out in the industry why am i all over social media i don't know it's not because of me it's because the blessings that i get from from doing this that that is uh that is incredible i i i can tell it it, it means a lot to you uh i think everybody that watches you do what you do understands that like you, you're so good at it and uh and so impactful and just such a such a good person and i think at the core of it that's that's what it's all about right we've got a lot of really really good people in this industry and it's really cool to see one of them stick out the way that you do. So I appreciate everything that you do for the industry. Uh, you're, you're making the world a better place every day and uh, appreciate you taking some time to join me on the podcast here today. Well, thank you so much. And like I said, it's not about me. It's about what everybody else can do. It's if I can do it, just being a little mom and pop shop here, Imagine what a lot of these big shops can do. You know, I can't uh, afford to give shop rights to, to every school, but if we can get all of the other shops around, then all of a sudden we all can do. It's not about what I can do, but it's about what we can do uh, to help the industry. If, if you hadn't invited me onto your show, we wouldn't be able to spread some of these little, uh, tidbits some of these little tips some of the little ideas you know and so you're the one that gets up there and shouts it out on the mountaintop <laughs> uh, we we as an industry right i think that's that's the big thing that i i love and the progress that i think i, I feel like i'm seeing in the industry is more people working together rather than against each other and we're starting to see results and i think this is this is just the start. We got to keep pushing. We got to keep getting these programs to be better, shops to be better, and, and really in in hopes of, <clears throat> excuse me, just making it a better industry. Because I think that's at, at the end of the day when we're looking for people and we're trying to show, you know, even, even to end users and clients that this is a really cool industry. And if you want to put your kid in this industry, it's a good industry to be in. If you uh, go to take your car to the shop and you're paying more than you remembered paying before because prices have gone up on everything, 
you're going to maybe accept that a little bit more and you'll understand I, it. You, yeah. And the whole thing is, is getting people to understand it because it's usually un, uh, uneducated uh, reasons why people get upset or whatever. And, and so it's showing them that. And the other thing is, you know, to the, to the shop owners and the other, uh, other ones, if, if you'd like some of what uh, I'm doing in, in the companies that, that I deal with, then, you gonna buy you some uniforms? Reach out to Red Cap. If you gonna buy you a smoke machine, look at uh, at Red Line Detection. You know, if you need a TPMS, look at A Tech because they're ones. You know, let's support the ones that are helping us do yes. things like that. There's a lot of companies out there that are that are doing just great things, and then there's a lot that that need a little um, a push or a little education to understand. Hey, you know, for fifty bucks, you can sponsor. Well, that's the same thing. Hey, do you know these schools? Because every every uh, company and manufacturer that I reach out to, when I tell them the story on the budget on the schools, they want to help. Uh, Redline detection is is a, they're giving away like twenty thousand dollars worth of, of of tools, and it's like, you know, they, some of them have to be careful because it's like, okay, well, I gave you well the the, the tool guy's trying to sell <laughs> the school that can't afford it. And, and they don't understand that if, if, uh, if Redline gives them a tool, you know, a, a, a drop, a, a dented tool, you know, it's like now they have something they can teach with versus, yeah, you didn't make a few bucks on it selling it to that school, but that school couldn't afford to buy it anyways. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's being understanding and being educated that, that helps us all. Well, more power to you, my friend. I, I hope, uh, Hope you keep up the good work, uh, and and I'm look forward. I always look forward to seeing your posts and everything that you're doing out there, and your lovely family. So uh, keep up the great work. <laughs> well, and hopefully we'll connect at uh, Apex this year. That's right. And uh, and uh, and I so much appreciate uh, you know the opportunity to to get on here after the third try. <laughs> <laughs> Schedules were crazy for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so you know when you talk about that, that's all part of you know you have to. Just you know, it's it's. It, I don't know if you know, we have an ice and snowstorm down here in, in the Dallas Fort Worth area, heard. and everything is closed and shut down. And <laughs> I was like, I, I got to get out there in the shop, and and we were brushing snow off a card, bringing it in, and it's like I got to get over here and, and and make time, you know, because you have to make time to do the things that are important. And I so much appreciate you know you giving me a, a chance on this uh, platform. To share a little bit of the story and like i said it's, it's not about me but it's about what everybody else in the industry can do to help well if anybody that's out there listening wants to reach out to jeff we'll have uh his information in the show notes for the podcast so you'll be able to reach out to him via social media uh linkedin uh and and some other platforms i believe we're putting out there so we'll we'll make sure to get your your information out there i would encourage any of you in the industry that are curious as to what jeff is doing in the industry to reach out to him uh very very open person and, and uh i'm sure he wouldn't mind talking to a few of you out there too anytime all right thank you so much jeff thank you <laughs>